Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here, and welcome to Chef on a Mission Radio, episode number 73. Today, I'm going to jump into, because it's the new year, it's uh, January of 2022, and it is cold out uh, to here in New York. Temperatures are going to be down in the teens, and um, it's cold. Winter's here, although we don't really have, per se, snow where I'm at. Uh, there is parts of New York that are blanketed with snow when you go upstate. Uh, but here in the Hudson Valley, we don't have any snow uh, currently. We've had one small dusting, but it is cold. So I'm here to tell you about all of the wonderful, wonderful local Hudson Valley and greater Hudson Valley produce and farm goods that are available to consumers this week. Yes, January, we don't really associate farmer's markets farm goods, local local products. There's really no association with that at all, except for maybe a random cheese here and there. And But I'm here to tell you today that that's not the case. Most consumers uh, have given up and most chefs have given up sourcing local. And you go into a restaurant, they will simply tell you that, oh, it's not the season. And you go on their website and it says farm to table restaurant. The menu says we support local. We do this, we do that all that kind of stuff. And the reality is that they wait until June, July, August, September, and they probably phase out in October when um, when corn is gone, local tomatoes are gone. And then they say, okay, great season. Now we'll wait for all those farms next year. So they associate a lot of this with the, with the farm stands that are actually open on the side of the roads. So let's jump into this, folks. And of course, as always, this is brought to you by Aroma Time Bistro, my restaurant in the Hudson Valley. We opened in 2003. Uh, we are farm to table, which is why I'm going to tell you what's available today. We are very farm to table. And it's brought to you by VIP Winery Vacations, VIPWineryVacations.com. Travel with us to wine countries in Italy and Mexico and all throughout New York. Lifetime memories are not optional. Check out VIPWineryVacations.com. We have a great service that we offer here in the Hudson Valley. Your car, our driver. We're licensed, insured under our insurance to drive your car. We do uh, tours up in the Finger Lakes and um, check out the website for tours to Valle de Guadalupe in Baja, Mexico. That is the wine region there, the Napa Valley of Mexico. Amazing food, hospitality, uh, hands down, uh, the best hospitality food and wine in all of Mexico. So check those out. That trip's coming up too in 2022. All right. So as far as farms, availability, farm hubs, uh, farms, produce, farm to table, January, first week in January, it's cold out. Um, so we get a list. We, do, we deal with two different farm hubs here in the Hudson Valley. And um, we buy year round from both of them. I think probably every week we buy from them. And it's great because the farm hubs allow us to buy from not one farm, but multiple farms. So what a farm hub typically does is, and a lot of communities have this across the country. So first of all, before we jump into what's available in the farm hubs, every part of America, right? When it was, the, when it was being um, settled, you know, no matter whether it was South Dakota, North Dakota, um, Idaho, upstate New York, um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia, wherever, wherever settlement went um, in early America, they were set up, these areas were set up to do multiple things and keep the food supply going year round. They didn't have transportation in 1825 and 1850 and 1875 and 1900. They didn't have refrigeration per se to, uh, to be able to say, you know what, let's just get those strawberries from California. Let's just get those tomatoes from Mexico. No, they had storage crops. They um, had a lot of storage crops. Now, because of refrigeration, storage crops have really increased. But a lot of these places had their own mills. They grew their own flour. They had their own grains. They had their own beans. Um, they had their own cheese. They had their own meat. Uh, they had a lot of things that that they that they only could source locally. They didn't they didn't hibernate 
Americans did not hibernate like bears in 1825 and not eat for the winter. They ate and they ate all local things. So these mills, these traditions, these farms, uh, some of these many farms, especially in upstate New York here, they've been family run since the early 1800s. Um, six, seven, eight, nine generations going strong of farming, storage crops, grains, all that kind of stuff. So uh, don't think this is a new thing by any means that all of a sudden, oh, in the last decade, the farm to tail movement has moved to the wintertime. It hasn't. It was a way of, it was a way of life and it was a way of, of, how, of, how, we, of how we survive. So the farm hubs, what a farm hub does is a farm hubs, a farm hub is more of a logistics company. Uh, they're a helping hand to a farmer. When I was in Colorado uh, at Walter's Bistro, uh, back in 1999, 2000, 2001, 1998, we sourced from almost 60 small farms, 60 small farms. It was like 55 on a regular basis. It felt like Heinz 57 tomato, 57 ketchup, 57 varieties. We literally had 55, 56 farms, almost 60 farms we were buying from. And logistics of paying bills were a nightmare, total nightmare because we would get a handwritten invoice, sometimes just on a piece of paper uh, from a farmer and would say, you know, tomatoes, $20. Didn't tell you how many tomatoes, it just said tomatoes, $20. It said arugula, $15. Potatoes, two potatoes, which means two 50 pound sacks of potatoes, $36. And it was a logistical nightmare to try to put these into a computer, the invoices and then formulate food costs and into a whole system like that, which the technology was there, the programs were there, the software was there. But when you're having farmers that aren't great at accounting, they're not great at accounts payable, they're not great at all that kind of stuff. They're not even great at delivering food. They're great at growing food, producing food. They're not great at all those other things. So when the farm hub started coming in, the technology coming in where I can go on my phone onto an app and see 50 small farms that are posting to a farm hub. What the farm hub does is the farm hub gives them a platform. The farmers post every Sunday or Friday, whatever it is. The farm hub then has this app that a chef can go on, or in some cases, a consumer can go on. Farms two tables uh, here in the Hudson Valley is a great resource for you locally. And um, um, it's, uh, let's see, what do they go by the other name? Farms to tables is what I use. F-A-R-M-S-2, the numeral two tables.com. Uh, just with just their transparent food company. So they have the, the F2T box, um, which is their um, subscription box, subscription grocery box for consumers. So, um, which they're not doing right now currently, um, but they were doing in the height of the pandemic. Um, so if you go to Farms to Tables, there's a bunch of resources there, Epicurean, Local Food Matters, um, Transparent Food Company, 100 mile, 100 mile market. So there's a bunch of things in there. And we use the farms, two tables, portion of that where we can go on and look at all these wonderful farmers post. So what the farm, any farm hub does, they handle logistics for the actual farmers. They post their, farmers post their items. The farm hub allows me as a chef or as a consumer to go on, click the boxes. I want corn, I want tomatoes, I want um, um, eggplant. I want, uh, I want one pound of jalapeno peppers from this farm here. I want, you know, 10 pounds of apples. Oh, I want five pounds of those purple potatoes from this farm there. And at the end of your checklist and after you're shopping, you've realized you're supporting 12 small farms. Now the farm hub employs their trucks to go out the next day and they go through and pick all the produce up, meats, cheeses, milk, anything, the dairy, the oats, the beans, they pick everything up from all the farms and then they send it to me the next day. So it doesn't even go to a warehouse. The farmer doesn't have to ship it to a warehouse. The company doesn't have to hold on to it and go bad. It's directly from the farm to me. If the farmer thinks he can pick 50 cases of tomatoes this week, he's going to write down 50 cases of tomatoes. And as orders come in, he picks the tomatoes, packs them and ships them. And then they're to me the next day, never hit a warehouse. And then the farm hub sends me the bill and pays the farmers. So I get one bill for $500 and this farm gets $25. This farm gets $5 for those five pounds of jalapeno peppers for the five pounds of potatoes from that farm. They'll get their seven fifty, and the farm hubs typically take about 20% to cover their gas 
vehicles, insurance, business model, website, app, that things like that. So it'll take about 20% is about average. I'm sure it varies in other parts of the country. So from that business model, myself as a local chef can source from 57 farms with one invoice, as opposed to 20 plus years ago, 57 farms, 57 invoices, logistical nightmare. I wasn't sure when my produce was going to come. Um, it was just a, a you know, disaster. Now, some companies like in Colorado, Boulder Fruit Exchange specialize from day one with lots of Colorado produce. Um, there's companies here, uh, Red Barn, Baldor. Some of these companies have lots of local, but they also have lots of non-local. So as a chef to going to these companies, you can simply buy tomatoes from Mexico because they're a buck a pound as opposed to tomatoes from Maine this time of the year that are three bucks a pound because you're a chef and you're watching your margins and the owner's on you. And if you don't come in with a good food cost, you're probably not going to have a job. One of those scenarios. And that's a big part of why chefs do not support local year round. They only support local when they're tripping over it, which means they're tripping over it, which means there's a ton of it and it's cheap, right? Just everybody's giving away zucchini in July. Here, come have some zucchini, have some zucchini. And the farmers are giving away zucchini in July too. It goes from a dollar a pound in July to literally $2, $3 a pound, $2 a pound in um, January, right? And it's not even local at that point. So um, I'm going to go over this list really quickly. I've done these on Facebook Live before, and, and the list goes on and on and on. But I'm going to literally go down the list here from one farm hub this week in the Hudson Valley in January. So here we go. Jerusalem artichokes from Daigley Brothers, uh, cabbage, garlic, celery, kale, kohlrabi, pea shoots. Um, pea shoots are coming from Sunsprout Farms. Um, apple cider vinegar for meat orchards. Apples, one, two, two full pages of apples. Pears are still, Bosch pears, suckle pears, all kinds of apples from Pink Ladies, Ruby, um, Jonathan Gold, Ida Reds, uh, Galas, Fortune, uh, Empire, Evercrisp, Crimson, Crimson Crisp, Cortland, Camo, you get it, lots of that. Um, artichokes are coming from Sunsprout, Hepworth, and Daigley Brothers, three different farms for that. Beets, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six farms. Broccoli Rob, Migliori, Broccoli Rob, cabbage, lots of cabbage, Savoy green, red, medium cabbage, Savoy cabbage, carrots, orange, purple, rainbow, yellow, celery root, garlic, kohlrabi, onions, red, red jumbo, uh, boilers, shallots, cipollini, uh, Spanish onions, yellow onions, uh, parsnips, potatoes, Adir Adirondack blue from Hepworth Farms. Those are really nice potatoes. Um, Lots of potatoes, fingerlings, gold, um, golden russets, cuca gold, uh, Lehigh, Peter Wilcox, Red Chieftain, Red Maria, russets, whites, Eva whites, uh, Yukon golds, uh, sweet potatoes, Bayou Bell, Covington, Covington roasters, radishes, uh, several different types of radishes from purple daikons to watermelon to white daikons to fall mix of radishes, rutabagas, Beefsteak tomatoes uh, coming locally. Uh, tomatoes on the vine locally from the, uh, the farmer actually sent me a picture of those of the farm. Turnips, winter squashes, butternut, kabocha, spaghetti. Uh, bok choy, yes, bok choy, greens, greens. Uh, escarole, actually that's non-local, the escarole. Um, they will sometimes bring in a non-local product, but they market here. Uh, Swiss chard. Kale, all kinds of kale, arugula from Radical, Migliori, uh, Sunsprout Farms. Um, this is really cool. Sustainable Aqua Farm. These people are in upstate New York, and they're making these um, butterhead lettuces that are really, really cool, really cool stuff. Um, they've been around for a while doing that, and a multi-leaf lettuce, um, expensive, but really, really good stuff. Uh, let's see, pea shoots, baby spinach, radical and sunsprout, baby Swiss chard. Uh, Alta Belly makes a fresh cut butternut squash. Uh, two or three or four different farms here. Uh, basil, chives, dill, ginger, mint, oregano, parsley, rosemary, sage, tarragon, thyme, and turmeric. All fresh mushrooms, 
Leap Foods, Bulick Farms, and there's other ones too uh, on the other farm hub. But everything from Lion's Mane, some Blue Oysters, Portobello, Shiitakes, uh, Cremini's, uh, lots of lots of mushrooms. You can even buy frozen uh, prepared foods like frozen butternut squash puree, cauliflower rice, collard greens, um, apple slices, frozen apple slices from meat orchards, uh, dried mushrooms, spreads. Uh, there are some spreads here, pesto, uh, lacinito, kale, and walnut uh, from Hawthorne Valley Farms, uh, all local in that there. Uh, lots of baked goods still, apple uh, donuts, donut, um, cider donuts, English muffins made uh, locally here in Peekskill, New York. Damn good English muffins. Uh, sourdough original, multigrain, sourdough whole wheat, uh, beef jerkies. Salsas, all kinds of salsas, really cool salsas, uh, fruit sauces. So like an apple cinnamon sauce, an apple sauce, an apple raspberry sauce. These are all in retail packages for consumers. Uh, aiolis from Saratoga garlic, so garlic aiolis. Pumpkin seeds from Storybrooke Wholehearted Farm. Um, Wanjashan, which makes all these, they're not using local products for it but they're making soy sauce right here in the hudson valley tamari Worcestershire, ponzu vegan Worcestershire sauce all available in retail dumpling sauce and and bulk uh, honey and maple syrup of course in fact in another month from now uh, if the weather is cooperating you'll have the first wild harvested food of the season which in february is maple water and i'll do an episode on maple water and how good it is for you and wonderful Hot sauces, all kinds of hot sauces from sriracha's um, to, I mean, there's two, there's about 15 different hot sauces here made in the New York area. And an asterisk is next to at least half of them because they're using New York products to go into those. Fermented foods, uh, South River Miso Company from Massachusetts making great misos, really nice misos. Hawthorne Valley Ferments. So all your fermented, lacto-fermented vegetables from sauerkrauts to kimchi, ginger beets, all that in there. Very good for your digestion, by the way. Uh, Rick's Picks, making some local pickles. Um, let's see, uh, real pickles from the Pioneer Valley. Barrel and Brine, Barrel and Brine out of Buffalo, making pickles. And they are using lots of local things for their pickles. Uh, so they're not buying in cucumbers from out of the region. They're actually using local. Um, small town cultures and keen uh, beverages. All kinds of apple cider, sparkling apple cider, Saratoga water, which is local. Uh, tonic, tonic uh, using uh, cucumber, lime, blueberry, ginger, peach, turmeric, lemon, ginger. Uh, and there's an astronaut there because they're using local flavorings. Uh, Brian and Barrel again using they're making kombucha with all local ingredients catalyst kombucha tonic from shire city herbals flour and grains folks farmer ground uh up in the finger lakes here locally uh don miller at uh, wild hive farms you can get whatever you need polenta oats oats are expensive a bag of oats for a chef here for organic oats would be 105 dollars as opposed to a chef going to the store, um, to a distributor, even Walmart to buy Quaker oats at a couple bucks a jar. These are $105. Uh, that's what we use right there. We use those local oats for our crumb topping for our blueberry crisp. And um, Jamie's been making oatmeal every day. So that's exciting. Uh, dried beans, oh no, five. So Berries, rye berries, spelt berries, wheat berries, cornmeal, all-purpose flour, all kinds of flours, buckwheat flour, pastry flour, rye flour, spelt flour, planta, and these rolled oats, steel-cut oats, uh, black beans, cranberry beans, shake-up cattle beans, dark beans, light beans, white beans, navy beans, pinto beans, soldier beans, yellow eye beans, all in stock, Genesee Valley and green, and green Thumb. Spofalini pasta makes this great organic pastas. They use some local grains in there, local, local flowers. Spofalini is amazing pasta, really good. Now, when it comes to dairy, folks, wide open on dairy. Cheeses from Argyle, uh, Edcorn Chase Home, Cricket Farm, Hawthorne Valley, McGrath, Five Spoke, uh, Nutton Ordinary, Nutton Ordinary uh, out of the Northeast, New Hampshire, out of New Hampshire, a little bit out of our region, but it, they're offering a nut a cashew cheese called nut and ordinary that's pretty cool 
Um, Old Chatham makes some great sheep's milk cheeses, amazing. West Meadow, um, really some good stuff. And then there's lots of other local cheese. This is just a small, small offering. The local cheeses are probably 10 times that amount. I mean, you can find local cheese anywhere. There's no reason for a restaurant to be buying um, imported cheeses. I mean, the only imported cheese we buy is the Reggiano. Other than that, it's all local cheese across the board. Um, even our even mozzarella you can buy, uh, like your mozzarella for pizza come come from the the local area, Greater Hudson Valley, uh, whether it's Jersey or whatever. There's lots of dairies and even Perry's ice cream, folks. Perry's ice cream from Buffalo is using a certain percentage of Sullivan County milk for their uh, ice cream. I think like twelve or seventeen percent of their milk comes from Sullivan County. Talk about being really local if you're up here. Um, Buttermilk, half and half, kefir, um, Ronnie Brook Hawthorne, Argyle, uh, Hudson Valley Fresh, Family Farmstead Dairy, tons of stuff there. Plant-based milks, plant-based milks uh, coming from Edenesque and has asterisks next to it, which means they're using local ingredients. Um, they're probably using local oats for their oat, maple syrup, uh, oat and maple. Uh, so they're probably using local for that. Yogurts. Argyle, Hudson Valley Fresh, Chase Home Farms, Hawthorne Valley, Eggcorn Hill, um, Ronnie Brook. If you want to get larger local, Cabot's available. Butter from Ronnie Brook, Green Spice, Green Spice Inspired Foods. I don't know what they have, but they have flavored butters, chocolate butter. Don't know. I've never not had that. Uh, but Ronnie Brook has some really good, really good butters. Of course, eggs. There's even cleaning supplies here from Absolute Green. I don't know much about Absolute Green, but they're here in New York. Uh, that's just the produce side of folks, plus a couple of green, uh, cleaning chemicals. Charcuterie from Charcuterie, Van Smokey, uh, No Dines. This is all bacon, ham, uh, salami, soprasada. Uh, Sugar Hill Farms has lots of great pork products. I mean, a whole page of pork products. Beef. Tons of beef farms, folks, tons and tons of cattle in the Hudson Valley. Um, here's Hardwick beef, 100% grass fed and pasture raised. Uh, hold on, a whole page of stuff for that. Um, Leap Foods, they make a blended burger, beef and mushroom, beef and mushroom, Leap Foods. Uh, more advanced Smokies, lamb, lots of lamb, chicken, uh, chicken from all over the Hudson Valley, from New Jersey. Uh, another whole page of that. Uh, turkey. Uh, Gof uh, Goffley and Green Green Ann Green Ann Farm Fresh Race. I'm not sure where they're at, uh, but they have ground turkey. Uh, so there you go, folks. There is an insane amount of products from the Hudson Valley. Um, I'm not saying you have to eat 100. percent I'm not saying a restaurant needs to be 100. percent But I think being conscious of what's out there and asking when you go to a restaurant is very important. Uh, for our local farmers, for the community, for your health, uh, for the economics locally. Throughout the whole pandemic, through when all these foods were being shorted from all over, you know, you can't get this, you can't get that, you can't get chicken wings, you can't get cooking oil, this, that. Every single farm locally here, whether they delivered themselves or went through a farm hub, the goods got delivered, the prices didn't get crazy. I mean, it was totally win-win. We were supporting local uh, some of the farmers, you know, because more and more people jumped on the local bandwagon, yeah, they did run out of things like beef. You can only produce so much, and it's not like you can just plant more seeds and have spinach seven days later, maybe sprout seven days later. You know, it's a full year of crops. So some people did experience a little bit of shortages, but it was nothing like we were experiencing from the distributors that were sourcing stuff from all over and stuff getting stuck on cargo ships and uh spices uh, prices going going crazy on certain things i mean wings tripled in price the local chicken did not triple in price it stayed the same price um local oats all those kinds of things things did not change in price drastically at all so local really came through during the pandemic and um so it's out there folks it's out there in the winter time it's out there in the summertime it's all over the place ask a restaurant if a restaurant says they're farm to table then say, well, you know, there are a lot of things, point them out and say, you should try searching for farm hubs instead. The bottom line is a lot of restaurants don't want to spend the extra money. A lot of consumers don't want to spend the extra money. But if you're listening to me, you probably understand the value of high quality food and 
uh, the nutrition and all that kind of stuff. So for you, you're probably above the average person. You are above the average person because you're listening to me and talk about this kind of stuff. So it's out there, folks. And there's some great stores in the Hudson Valley that really do a great job of sourcing local, more local, but again, not 100%. But, you know, Adams Farrier Farms, they have a lot of local stuff. Uh, when you go into certain grocery stores, more and more so. The smaller stores, the independents, like an Adams, or even smaller than Adams, the health food stores, these are the stores where you can speak to the owner and drum up an awareness, drum up uh, interest in products where they can bring products in for you and for other people to see that, hey, there is local and it is here and let's support it. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Chef on a Mission Radio. If you're up in the Hudson Valley, stop by my restaurant, Aroma Time Bistro in Ellenville, New York. Aroma Time, T-H-Y-M-E Bistro.com. Follow us on Instagram. And if you want to go to wine country with Jamie and I, travel with a chef, uh, you can do that. Go to VIPWineryVacations.com. Click the region you like, whether it's Italy, New York, or Vida Guadalupe in Mexico, Long Island, upstate New York, Finger Lakes, Hudson Valley. Click the region you're interested in, and it'll take you to a separate website with all that information. Uh, you can do a little virtual tour of our last trip to Mexico. Every day is broken down with meeting amazing winemakers, amazing owners, um, chefs, everything, the hotels we stayed at, sunrises on the vineyards, uh, sunset on the Pacific. It was just a, an amazing, amazing time. The best, the best ceviche at La Guerranese, uh, the best tacos at Tacos El Yaqui, the best breakfast at La Cucina de Dona Estela, uh, the best food of all of Mexico um, at Fauna, at the winery Bruma, uh, a lot of French winemakers, um, uh, Spanish winemakers, Mexican winemakers, South American, uh, American winemakers down there, all of it. They have it all, Italian winemakers. So check out that on the virtual tour part of that website. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Share this episode, download it, like it, rate it. And thank you everybody for your support.